We're back. This is Dear Woke Christian, the podcast, and my name is Jason. This open letter format podcast is directed to those who profess to be woke or embrace critical race theory or think that for some reason other people owe you reparations. This podcast is for you. My hope and my prayer is that you'll consider what God's word actually says and that you'll compare that to anything that you've been told, bought, or maybe even sold. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't line up with God's truth, that you'll get rid of it. You don't need it. So today, we're going to just jump in. I got a quick one uh, discussing a matter that we've discussed multiple times before, but I just want to show you just how pervasive this idea has become and how unhinged it has become from anything that resembles reality. So what we're talking about is reparations. So let's go. And before we even get started, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. This is an Ezekiel 18 type of situation. You've heard me discuss Ezekiel 18 before. I've, I, I believe I've solidified myself that I, I adhere to Ezekiel 18 as it relates to sins of the father being passed on to the son. And should the son pay for the sins of his father? I think I've made that case pretty clear. So if you don't mind, we're going to just jump in because we got to discuss this. But before I talk about this, um, discuss this lady's um, ideology, shout out because she has a really cool microphone. It's the same mic that I have. And I actually like it quite a bit. So if you follow this channel, you know I've jumped around microphones. I think I found one that I like. And uh, shout out to her because she has a good microphone. She doesn't have good theology though. Let's go. So reparation is really about repairing the relationship mm. that broke. And okay. I think that that's fine. If you want to say that there was a relationship that was broken. So let's look at this young lady in this video. She's a black woman or a woman of color, whatever you want to call her. And this gentleman over here is a white man. What relationship was broken between them? Yeah, that's my point. And the relationship in order to repair it, you got to know when did it break and how did it break? It broke the moment that those first explorers landed on the coast of Africa and said by edict of the, of the Pope, the Pope Nicholas V, mm -hmm. we have the right to claim this land and enslave your people because you are not civilized. Mm -hmm. they let's, go ahead, let's just go ahead and unpack that. What she's saying is true. That was, a, that was an error, that was sin, that was wickedness, that was all the wrongs, everything wrong. But that was 400 plus years ago. What do we have to pay for it now? That's the problem. What, what do we have to pay for it now? Are, are we continuing in that sin? No. Are there people who, who um, look at other people groups as uncivilized and, and non-people? Absolutely. But what does that have to do with us paying reparations today? Just asking. They failed to recognize the image of God in the people they were, that were staring back at them. And get this, you know, Captain Cook, not Hook, but Cook, in yes. Australia, landed on that soil and said, looked at all the indigenous people and said, there's nobody here. Yeah. So that was the terra nullius. This is nobody's land. Um, hello, there were hundreds of nations on that land. So when you look at a person and say you are a non-person, that's the point of the break. So is somebody saying that today, though? Is somebody saying that today? Is somebody looking out over downtown Atlanta and saying, there's nobody here? Is somebody looking out at, you know, Midtown DC and saying you are all uncivilized. Is somebody saying that? Is somebody saying that now? Tell me who it is. And then if they are saying it, why are you not correcting that person rather than every people group that might, I'm sorry, all people that look like that person? That's all I'm wondering because nobody's saying that now. Granted, they did do that in the past. She is correct in, in her assessment of history, but what are we paying for? What is she asking people to do? Pay for the sins of their fathers. Ezekiel 18 is in play. And so yeah. what does it look like then to fix it? It looks like to recognize the personhood, to recognize the inherent dignity, to recognize the call of God, the divine. Okay, I got to step back a little bit. Is anybody not saying that they're, that people of color, black people, highly melanated folk have no dignity? Who's saying that? Who is saying that? Nobody is. So what is she talking about? And 
to, I'm going to back up a little bit as I like to do. I'm going to back up just a little taste to give her a little bit of room because she says something else that's pretty interesting about the dignity of God. Let's go back just a taste. Let's go. Of God, the divine call to back. exercise, to, to recognize the mm -hmm. personhood, to recognize the inherent dignity, to recognize the call of God, the divine call to exercise stewardship of the world. Okay. The divine call of God to exercise stewardship on the world of the world. I can agree, but since we know where this, how this is being played out, I have some consternation about agreeing with that. Yes, we should. We, we we're supposed to, as God's representatives on earth, we are supposed to subdue the earth and and work the earth and all that kind of good jazz like that. Where she's going with this is going to be a lap too far. But let's let Lisa finish to exercise agency, to shape the world. And so that looks like in terms of reparation. Okay, so she took what, what I agreed with that God has called his people to exercise agency, to work the earth, to subdue it. I, yep, I, I agree. And now she's gonna slip reparations into that. Where did that come from? Because that's not in the passage. I don't, I don't even know where she's getting this from, but let's go back. Just a taste as I like to do, just get a running start. It looks like in terms of reparation, calling on our leaders to go to the impacted people and ask them, what do you say is required for things to be made well for you? Do you see the lunacy in that? To go to a people group that first of all, you're, you're assuming their participation in this sin, because if somebody's a migrant from Africa and they're here in America, they are not a part of anything. But if my family, if my ancestors were brought here as slaves, okay, I got your point, but I'm no longer a slave. My dad was not a slave. My grandfather was not a slave and his grand, his dad was not a slave. So what are you talking about? And what has been impacted? Let's just be honest, people. What's being impacted? What is she referring to? Because she's saying these things and they sound good, but what are they? Hmm. So that you, we you, can yeah. be good in our relationship. Why are we not good in our relationship? That's a better question. More than likely is sin, but she's assuming that there's some beef between this guy's name is Frank. Beef between Frank and myself. I have no problem with Frank. Go ahead, man. I disagree with him having this on his, on his channel, but I ain't got no problem with him. He wants to sit down and have some wings and, and the such and, and chop it up. I ain't got no problem with him. So what is the problem? See, you're assuming problems. You're you're already assuming your conclusion that there's an issue that reparations is going to solve. That will repair the relationship and it will restore their call and capacity to exercise stewardship even over this moment. That that whole sentence made no sense. I'm a, I'm back. I'm sorry. That made no sense at all. Uh, listen to what she says. And it will restore their call and capacity to exercise stewardship even over this moment. What does that even mean? How are you exercising stewardship over this moment? And if Frank doesn't dig into his pocket and give me reparations that I can't exercise over this moment, what does she talk about? This is the stuff that gets passed off as scholarship. This is the stuff that gets passed off as scholarly, well thought out arguments. And they're not. They're not that at all, even though she still has a good choice of microphone. Way to go. Dear Lisa Harper, you don't know me. My name is Jason. Miss Harper, what you're talking about is utter foolishness. It's not biblical. You can use God's name. You can talk about stewardship and you can talk about the, the image of God and agency. But man, what you're talking about is not biblical. And I'm asking you to repent. I'm asking you to turn from this teaching. You're teaching people to sin. You're teaching people to hate other image bearers and to require from people today something that is not required of them and, and to exact from people today what is not the Lord God is not requiring from them. You're wrong. And I can say that because. This is Dear Woke Christian, the podcast. This open letter format podcast is meant to encourage you to see the sufficiency, the wonder, and I'll even go as far to say the freeing nature of God's holy word. I want you to compare everything that you've been told 
against God's word. If it doesn't line up with God's truth, you get rid of it. If it doesn't make much of Jesus Christ, you get rid of it. You don't need it. We don't need reparations. But what I do need from you is that three piece special. Can you please like this video? Can you share this video maybe with Frank or, or Lisa? Can you please leave a comment down below? And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. It's not going to hurt you. It doesn't cost you anything. And it does let me know that you're finding value in this channel and the projects that we're doing. I thank you so much. I appreciate you so much for all of this. And in the meantime and in between time, until next time, grace and peace.